Um, just before I start, um, this talk has a lot of SQL. So if SQL is not your cup of tea, I know Andres has a really nice talk now, so feel free. Um, I'm going to talk about mapping a tree with Grace, actually mapping a tree with GORM. Um, this is like uh, more about SQL mapping than any new GORM stuff. Uh, I will be talking this afternoon in another talk called uh, Multi-Project Build and a Multi-Tenancy. Uh, I will talk there about uh, data services um, and multi-tenancy, which are uh, really cool features of, of GORM 6.1. Uh, so if you are interested in the new stuff, uh, I try to cover a little bit of them uh, this afternoon. My name is Sergio Delamo. Um, I work in the OCI Grace team. Um, I am Mr. Delamo in Twitter. I write a, a Groovy newsletter called groovycalamari.com. It's a, a weekly email uh, with six or seven links of curated content. By that I mean something I have read myself and I find interesting. Uh, it's uh, mostly about uh, Groovy technologies that I work with. Uh, so there is a lot of great stuff, a lot of Jeff stuff, which I am pretty fan of, um, but anything in the Groovy ecosystem. Uh, I am working heavily on the guides.grace.org uh, website that uh, if you were in Jeff keynote this morning he mentioned. Uh, we publish a new guide every, uh, every Monday. So feel free to go there to, we try to, to showcase how to do like a, a common stuff that you would probably would like to do with a Grace application. Like we, for example, we have like a guide about how to upload a guide to, to a Grace application or how to change languages or uh, some more uh, advanced uses of Grace, like Grace with JavaScript frameworks such as Angular or React. So feel free to check them out. Um, this talk is heavily based uh, on this book, which I found um, just by chance by Bill Cowen. Uh, especially, it's based on one chapter of this book, which covers all these um, ways of mapping a tree in an SQL database. Uh, so, if you work with Critical data, um, some quick definitions. Uh, when we call a, in a tree a data structure, uh, each of uh, the entries is called a node. Uh, a node may have a number of children and one parent. Uh, the top node, which has no parent, is called the root. The nodes at the bottom, which have no children, are called leaves. And the nodes in the middle are, are simple no leaf nodes. Um, with this out of the way, uh, where do we see trees in web applications? We see trees everywhere, basically. Uh, so if you go to YouTube um, and you check the comments, even if, even if they are not really useful, uh, they are still uh, hierarchical data. Uh, the YouTube comments, uh, they are really tough to design, uh, or, or you can really uh, find yourself in a trap if you design this hierarchical data incorrectly the, because the way they basically display the information is they display the, the root nodes and then they display some immediate children and then a count of, the, of all the replies to a, a particular root node. Uh, so imagine uh, while we go through the examples uh, how would you map this uh, uh, with a tree structure. Uh, another really common example is uh, a breadcrumbs. Uh, Ticket Biz is a Spanish company, uh, which, uh, for the proud of us in Spain, uh, got acquired last year by eBay. And they were building uh, a third party seller uh, web application with Grails. So it's actually a, a Grails success case. So they have this particular uh, tree. Uh, they organize the tickets like for, for a, a football game. Uh, as you can imagine, this kind of tree is not going to um, change a lot because probably uh, unless a new league is created or at least a new competition is created or, or they introduce a new sport in the platform, the tree is going to basically stay 
um, the same, but they are going to have a lot of impressions. If each time they saw a ticket, they need to display all the ancestors of a particular node in the tree. So for the use case, a query an ancestor is going to be really uh, important. Um, the example that is uh, used in the book and that I'm going to use in the presentation as well is um, a back report. Um, I have like a, a root node and then I have like answers to the root nodes and I can annihilate the answers as displayed in the graph. Um, we are going to have like a primary key, the author of the comment and the message. And we are going to see how to solve this with four solutions, uh, with an adjacency list, with a path enumeration, with an nested sets or with a closure table. Um, let's start with the one that we have already, we have used this one for sure, this uh, called adjacency list. And it's uh, basically probably the most used uh, software engineering design to map a tree in a database. Um, so we basically reference uh, our parent node with a foreign key in the table. Um, so in the comment table, uh, we have like the primary key, the parent ID, which is a foreign key to the same table, the author, which we are going to start like directly a name here, and a, a comment, which we are going to allow like a, a larger input. Uh, we could um, map this with GORM. Um, several things here. Uh, in GORM, when you create a domain class, uh, a primary key column will be added with a property called long ID. Uh, we can change the name of the column that we want in the database, uh, as uh, shown here. Uh, the version falls here. Um, Grace in a domain class, uh, automatically, if you don't say the contrary, it has uh, automatic versioning. So if you want to turn this off, like with version false, uh, no version column will be added to your table. Um, remember, we wanted like uh, big uh, amounts of text in the, the comment, so we can map this with the comment type text. And then uh, that's a personal preference, I prefer, although if you don't specify a uh, nullable will be false by default, uh, I prefer to put it here because at one point in Grace, nullables was true by default and then they change and then all the tests break. So <laughs> I personally prefer to, uh, to define it explicitly here. Uh, I have nullable true here because uh, for the root nodes, uh, the, we are not going to have a parent, so we will need to allow uh, null, null values there. Uh, this will map in a database uh, in this simple uh, <coughs> table. So the table before uh, display the, this graph, basically. Um, an adjacency list uh, has some problems, as we will see soon enough, but it has advantages as well. Uh, one of the advantages is really easy to insert a new node. So to insert a new node, for example, under uh, the comment number five, uh, I just need to supply the parent, the new author, and the new comment. And this with GORM is really easy as well. Uh, you basically instantiate the domain class, supply the parent. In, a, in the map constructor, this will be set to the, to the property parent. And then you save it, and you are good to go. Uh, updating a comment. Uh, in an adjacency list is easy also. Uh, by updating a comment, I mean moving a node in, in, the, in the tree. For example, we are going to move the comment 6 and the comment 7 uh, below uh, comment 3. So that's really easy in an adjacency list. Um, you basically do an update uh, statement. And in Grace, it's easy as well. You basically set the parent, save the instance, and you are good to go as well. Uh, querying the um, immediate child and parent. Uh, in this presentation, when I call about, when I talk about ancestors, I mean all the parents uh, until we reach uh, like a root node, and descendants, I mean all the children until I reach a leaf node. Uh, by child or parent, I mean only the, the immediate ancestor, um, the guy above or the guy below or the guys below. Um, since we have already uh, our 
own ancestors in the in the table reference is really easy with a with a simple join we can uh, query both uh, in Grails is easy as well um, if I want to design this to return always a list in case my database uh, model uh, supports to have uh, multiple parents. Uh, that's why I return a list here as well. Uh, it's easy enough to return in an adjacency list uh, the list of the parents. Yes, I return the parents of the domain class. And this is a, like a where query where I say, okay, um, give me all the comments whose parent uh, is the comment uh, entity and this will return the immediate child. Uh, the problem is uh, how do I return all the ancestors, um, which is a pretty common operation in a in a in any web application that displays tree data. Uh, remember the breadcrumbs uh, where they need to display all the ancestors until the top. So if you write this code, uh, this is like a lot of recursion. You are basically doing a select query for each of the ancestors. So this is going to have a, a terrible performance in your in your in your application. Um, but you can tell me, yeah, but you could solve this with joins. Uh, you join, you join, you join, but how many joins do you put? I mean, uh, if you want to support, if you ever find yourself asking your question, like how many, how many levels do we need to support in a tree, uh, then maybe is you design your database with an adjacency tree, and now you are paying the cost. Um, if you are uh, using a modern database, uh, you have a solution uh, with uh, a with query. Uh, you can do like a recursion and, and basically uh, some databases support this uh, kind of query. Uh, so you could query all the ancestors in a single query or all the standards. Um, if you are already in a, an application where you have an adjacency list, and you are already in an application working with a database that supports this kind of query, uh, this could be a, a solution for your problem. Uh, we are going to explore um, uh, other scenarios where we don't need a, uh, such a solution. Uh, let me show you uh, like a real GORM, uh, like a real Grace application with an adjacency list. So let me go into presentation mode. So, for the example, what I did is I created a service, an interface, actually. One second. It's called tree service. Um, so basically, I created an interface. Uh, I don't want uh, the way I map uh, my data with GORM to basically go all the way to the controller. In fact, this is a Grace plugin, which doesn't know anything about how my domain classes are mapped. Um, so basically, uh, I just want to have like a, a class which implements this interface, like give me the author, give me the comment, and give me the primary key. Uh, and then I want a com uh, basically an interface which gives me uh, either the the descendants of a comment, which will be like all the descendants, the child of a comment, which will be only the, the immediate descendants, ancestor, parents. I want to be able to delete a comment. I want to move like a comment and save a comment or read a comment. Um, my domain class, uh, since I named my interface comment, I have named my domain class comment called MTT. I sometimes find useful to name the domain classes with any kind of suffix. Um, so you uh, know that you are dealing with a domain class. Um, since I changed the name of, uh, of the domain class from comment to comment government entity, I have uh, used this mapping. So basically you can tell, okay, I want you to map this domain class to this table instead of comment uh, underscore gom underscore entity. I want you to use comment. Um, the other things are the same that we saw in the slide. Um, and in the comment uh, service, uh, we implement the tree service and basically uh, the save, the move, uh, the delete is a bit more complicated because basically you need to, to get all the descendants and then reverse them and delete them so the referential integrity is not violated. So deleting is already a, a tough 
uh, thing, and I still uh, display here, I have like the descendants and ancestors with all this recursion, which is really bad. Uh, I could do here like a, a join, but I wanted to put this code here because the w probably the most common case is uh, when the programmer who wants to display the breadcrumbs uh, goes in the GSP, he's going to create a tag lib, and he's going to put all the recursion here, and then you are not going to realize why this whole thing is not performing well. So uh, try to avoid complicated tough stuff in, in tag libs. Uh, try to put everything in services, and try to uh, make your controllers uh, return uh, as much as possible the view that you want to construct. GSPs, uh, or any view, in my opinion, should be as stupid as possible. So uh, try to put everything in, in services, um, and you will uh, uh, see the, your bottlenecks uh, more easily. Okay, let me go back to the presentation. Path enumeration. Um, path enumeration, uh, let me play. Uh, it's a strategy where we basically uh, store a path. Um, so we don't have referential integrity here, uh, which is a bad thing. Uh, but we'll have other advantages. Uh, I store also a length column. I will uh, talk about this uh, more later. So we, don't, we no longer have the parent column. How we could map this with GORM? Uh, we basically will have a string for path. I, have, I am using a Postgres uh, database here, and I have, uh, with uh, such a statement, you can configure a bar chart to be, by default, uh, a normal string will be mapped to uh, 255 characters. Uh, so this way you can basically say, the, okay, this bar chart is going to be like uh, a thousand characters because I want to give me some space uh, to, to store uh, a long paths. And then the length, uh, we are going to see what's uh, the role of length soon enough. Uh, so basically, uh, this is really easy to understand. It's the same concept as we are all used in a file system. Uh, so basically, you store all the path uh, of your ancestors um, and yourself. Um, <coughs> you can use any separator. You can use a backlash, as I am using uh, here. Uh, one drawback, uh, which I spoke about, uh, you are breaking referential integrity. Uh, you are uh, giving yourself more flexibility, but you are putting uh, redundant data in the database. Uh, so that's, uh, you are going to need more space for the database. Uh, if, your, um, if the values between the delimiters, the uh, they don't have like a fixed length. Like for example, I am storing the, the primary key. So in the moment I have like a primary key of 10, uh, the values in between are not going to have the same length. So what you can do is you can create a, a column named length where you basically uh, have like the count of the ancestors. It will uh, make your life easier to do queries um, against the tree. So uh, once you have the database like this, uh, doing uh, getting all the ancestors with a single query uh, is as easy as display here, basically. Uh, this is like a, a like the other way, which basically uh, it's easier to understand. Basically, you are querying like uh, one, four, six with the percentage sign, one, four with the percentage sign, one with the percentage sign, and then the pa to get the descendants, basically, you do the like the other way around, uh, where you basically concatenate like the one, four with the percentage sign. Um, in we can do this with a single uh, uh, selecting grace with a criteria query. Uh, basically, what I have done is I have a method which uh, given a path, like uh, 1467 returns me this list. Uh, and then basically, I can uh, basically group like all operations uh, with the like, the path, and against the length. And then um, I don't want to include myself as an ancestor, so that's why I have this non equal here. Uh, getting the descendants is even easier. Uh, this is a like uh, with a where a query. Uh, my advice is whenever you are able to code the query with a where query, use a use query instead of a criteria query because you get uh, 
advantages like uh, static compilation and also uh, our query returns a detached criteria, so which will not get executed until you call like dot list or dot get. Um, again, I don't want to include myself as the descendant, that's why I have this uh, ID, uh, not equals uh, comment entity ID. Comment entity will be like the object for which you are uh, looking for the, the descendants. Uh, adding a new child is uh, a bit more complex, not really more complex, but uh, you will understand how. Uh, you basically, you add a new row in the database, and then you get the path of the father of your, of your uh, ancestor, of your immediate ancestor, and then what you are going to do is you are going to concaten your, the, for this row, the path is going to be the ancestor path, uh, the last inserted ID, this is like from database uh, to database it changes. This is like a MySQL uh, method to give you the, the last inserted ID. And then you are going to concatenate with the path. So if this is like from number seven, this will probably be like uh, one, four, six, seven. And then like if the new ID is eight, eight. I have a demo as well of this. Give me one second. So, JDJ. Path enumeration. Okay. Um, I am using the same interface and the same uh, interface for the comment as well because I want to extract a. Uh, let me show you the controller, for example. I, I did a controller called comment controller. Or tree controller, maybe. Tree controller. So I use compiler static as much as I can. Uh, I am telling this controller is answering only JSON. Um, I like to do, instead of injecting dependency like this, I do to like to put dependencies like this. Uh, you can see there is no tree service. Uh, I have uh, configured the bin uh, in resources.groovy. So the bin for the tree service is this comment service. So you can have this code like in a different plugin from the uh, actual comment service implementation. Um, and then basically I, I query the descendants, the childs of comments and the parents of comments. I will make this code available. Uh, so you can see that all these uh, for example, this will be like one query to read one and one to get the descendant. Uh, you couldn't even supply the ID directly to the, to the service. And basically, you will not need uh, this read query. Um, another thing that I wanted to tell you, let me see if I have. Uh, whenever you are doing uh, read operations, use uh, transactional read only true. Uh, or in the new versions of GORMS, there is like a read-only annotation. Uh, it's not, I am using like, not the latest versions of GORMS with this project, so that's why it's not picking up. But if you were using like here 1.3, uh, you should replace like this transactional read-only true for add read-only. Um, back to the service. Um, I am doing this instead of, this is not the best solution, instead of do, using like a, you will, you should use a, to do this in the same transaction, a, a database a method to get the, the ID that is going to be inserted, but this differs from database to database. So just to illustrate the point, I did two transactions. The first transaction basically will save a, the comment with the, with the parent path. And then I calculate the length. Uh, and then in the next transactions, once I have the ID, I will basically concatenate the ID plus the separator. So at the end of the day, I will have the same thing. Um, you can see that the, the queries, they don't need any recursions. They are only one select. Uh, to get all the childs of a comment, uh, which are like the immediate child, the immediate uh, descendants, the descendants is as well a one query. Uh, this is another advantage of uh, where queries. Where queries are composable. So I have here one query, uh, which uh, does the like. 
path like the path query, which I have it here. And then uh, if you want to exclude yourself, I have here, for example, a, a method with a default uh, parameter value. And this will basically concatenate the where query. So you can compose queries depending on the parameters of a method. That's pretty powerful of where queries. Um, yeah, if, if the query you are trying to achieve is possible uh, with a where query, where queries is the way to go. OK. Uh, this is the criteria that I saw you before. Um, and I have like integration tests for this. Um, so you can check it after. Uh, basically, um, you can see that actually you are doing only one select to get all the answers or all the descendants. OK, let's go ahead back to. We have seen adjacency list and path enumeration. Uh, this is going to be nested sets. Um, this is a bit more uh, tricky. Uh, so basically, uh, so you are storing two numbers uh, per comment. Uh, note, these are not uh, foreign keys, so you don't have reference integrity. These are just uh, two numbers that you are going to calculate per comment and that you are going to put there. Um, this is really easy to map uh, uh, with GORM. You just add two numbers here, and I'm going to say that the, this can be nullable true. This probably should be nullable false, but it's OK. Um, the, the rules. Uh, are a bit uh, tougher to say than to see, but uh, let's uh, read them first. So basically, uh, the left number of each comment, uh, all the descendants uh, is less than all the numbers used by the comments descendants, and the comments right number is greater than all the numbers used by the comments descendants. So let's see this with an example, which is easier. So we had this graph. So the left number is less than all the descendants, and the right number is more than all the descendants. Uh, one way to calculate uh, these numbers is to basically you are going to go through the tree from left uh, to right, so like this. And going the tree that way, you will basically uh, this is compliant with the rules of the left number and the right number. Uh, at the end of the day, this will map to a table in a database, um, as here. Uh, but uh, please note that these are not foreign keys, uh, so you don't have reference and integrity, so that's uh, a big problem, in my opinion. Um, but thanks to the rules, uh, using the between uh, of SQL is actually really easy to query ancestors and query descendants. So if uh, your use case uh, is really heavy on querying ancestors and descendants, uh, it's really easy. Uh, it's just simple selects with a between clause. Um, inserting a new child, uh, it's a bit more tough. Uh, basically, this will update all the nodes which need to be updated. So basically, uh, set ns left case when ns left. So basically, else ns left. Uh, for those nodes that don't have to be updated, the same value will be kept. For those nodes who need to be updated, both ns right and ns left will be uh, increased. And then, uh, depending of your uh, of the ns left value and the ns right value of a particular node, uh, you insert the new node. So again, this is easier uh, seen with an example. Uh, so remember, here in the tree, uh, all these values are going to change because we So inserting this basically forces us to recalculate uh, this, 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 this. So uh, this way of mapping a tree into a database, if you have a lot of insertions, uh, it's probably a bit challenging. It's probably not the way to go. If you don't have a lot of insertions, um, you get some advantages in the, in the querying. Um, 
querying the immediate parent also is a bit uh, complicated. Uh, so if that's your use case, that's tough as well. Uh, the latest, uh, the last uh, method to map a, a tree in a database using GORM that I wanted to talk about is closure table. Uh, so several things. Uh, in closure table, you need two tables. Uh, this is the first of, uh, of the design methods that we see that you need two tables. The other three were one table. Uh, you need a parent ID. Sorry again. So parent ID here is not necessary. That's my fault in the slides. Uh, you basically, in this table, you don't need about the tree. Uh, you store the tree in a tree path. Those are four inch keys to the comment table. So um, let's see this, how we can map this with GORM. Uh, so basically, uh, we can see here, uh, I have added an additional length column for the uh, tree path table. Uh, this will allow us to perform certain queries easily. Uh, one thing we can see about GORM, uh, if we, want, we don't want GORM to basically create a primary key called uh, ID, Instead, we want to have like a composite a primary key, which will be composed by ancestor and descendant. And this is what we do here. Uh, and then we are basically renaming the columns for descendant and ancestor as well. And the table uh, version is turned off for both. So that way we have the same tables mapped with GORM as we have it here. Um, Okay, these are the characteristics. Uh, how does it work? Basically, uh, each node will have a connection to each descendant and will have a connection to itself as well. It's easy with an example. So for node number one, we have a connections to ourselves, and we will have a connections to all the descendants. We have a connection to descendant number two, we have a connections to descendant number three, to descendant number five, to descendant number four, to six, and to seven. So you have uh, a connection to all the descendants. Uh, one drawback of this is uh, you will need uh, more space, uh, not just the additional table. The additional table, if you have a really big tree, uh, will have a, a lot of relationships stored on that. So basically, for our graph, this will be the relationship that we need to store in the database. Um, but the big advantage is the queries are really nice and really simple. So basically, uh, to get all the descendants of four, you just basically say, OK, uh, where ascendant ancestor is four, and this will give you all the descendants. Uh, this query will give yourself as a node, as a descendant. So uh, in, the, in the code, I will show you how you can exclude yourself. Uh, so basically, what you are saying, OK, give me all uh, relationships that have an, an ancestor of four. Um, uh, this is the, the descendants of six, uh, the ancestors of six, sorry. Uh, so instead of using the ancestor column, you are using the descendant column. So in the graph, uh, you will return yourself plus all the ancestors. Um, inserting a new child. Uh, in SQL, uh, it's easy. In GORM, without executing S directly SQL statements, it's a bit more complicated. As you can see, this is doing like a multiple inserts here. And it's like inserting a reference to yourself here. Um, I will show you in the, in the code how to do that. Um, deleting from tree paths. Uh, this is the first uh, of the models that we see uh, where you don't. Uh, since the relationships are completely separated from the comments, uh, you can remove uh, uh, like something from the tree, but the comment will be still in the tree. So if, for example, you are uh, doing like an e-commerce website, and you have like products, and you want to organize the products in like categories, uh, if by any chance, uh, it's probably that when you want to remove the relationships, uh, you want the product to still be there. Uh, even if you don't have not decided where you are going to put it. Uh, so this model will fit uh, well this kind of uh, applications. Um, it's really also easy to remove like all the uh, subtree. Okay. 
Um, then uh, you saw in the database that I have like the length, uh, which I have as well in my GORM uh, domain class. Uh, this will allow you to do such queries. So you, in order to like, get the, the immediate parent or child uh, with the length, uh, it's going to be really easy. Mm, I have a demo. OK. Close your table. So I have uh, this domain class. As you can see, you don't have any information about the relationships. Then I have the commentary path, where I have like uh, the two domain classes with my composite key, uh, the column change. Um, I have uh, created the equals and has code as well. Um, and I think if you have a composite key, it needs to be like serializable. Um, let me open the service. Common service. Uh, the insert uh, is uh, more code, uh, but you don't. It's like just one transaction. It's, you don't need like to do a, a, a multiple transactions. In my opinion, it's easier than the and with the path enumeration. Uh, so you will see we store the comment and then we start uh, saving the relationship. Uh, we save the relationship to ourselves. Uh, then I save the relationship to. Um, to the immediate ancestor and then to the other ancestors, uh, which because I have to add a, since I am adding a new node to the tree, all the ancestors of that node need to have a relationship to that new node. So that's what I'm doing here. Uh, but the querying is really, really easy. As you can see, these are like where statements. Uh, since I added the length uh, in order to get like the, the child of a comment is really easy. Same with the descendants. And same fetching all the uh, descendants or ancestors of a comment is really easy. It's all work queries. It's a one select, a compile static. Um, so really nice. OK. Let me go back. So we saw four. Um, just fast recap. Uh, First three only need uh, one table. Closure table needs two tables. Uh, important bits, uh, referential integrity is enforced by uh, adjacency list and by closure tables. Uh, personally, um, I find the nested sets a bit convoluted. Um, adjacency list, if, for example, you are doing like something that you are pretty sure that it's going to be like uh, and you are going to have a lot of insertions, uh, it's an alternative. You just n need to know the limitations. Uh, and closure table, in my opinion, is a really uh, interesting solution uh, because it's also one, the only solution of these four that allow you to have uh, like multiple parents. Uh, so before working in OCI, I was working in a company where we were uh, mapping uh, supermarket products, and we have like a, a tree of categories. and. We were using actually an JCC list, so uh, we we couldn't have like um, if you want to map like supermarket products like for flavors or for different uh, like allergies contents, it's useful to have like nodes that have multiple parents, so they can appear in your tree in different places, and a closure table will allow that. So just uh, think about uh, your use case. How are you going to use it? Uh, know the limitations and, and, and choose accordingly. Um, as I said before, I work in OCI. Uh, we do several um, services around Grails. Uh, we have like a help desk, so you can uh, send us a support ticket, like, kind of like a send desk. Uh, as Jeff do, we do a lot of accurate services. Uh, some of the folks in the team are working together with some clients team, uh, so you... you don't lose control of the project, but uh, uh, we basically uh, enhance your team. We do training as well, uh, and project completely project outsourcing if you, if you are looking for that. Uh, if you have any questions, I have t-shirts from, from Madrid GUG, which is a conference in Madrid uh, around the Groovy ecosystem. 
So for anyone who makes a comment, it goes a teaser for you. Go ahead. Yeah. Don't get too much to that if you have one slash two slash three and, and the other one is one slash two slash thirty. Don't also get Yeah. Problems. Give me one second. Uh, not with the word query because I am looking for all the descendants, so you will get them all. Uh, for the other ones, uh, the way I do it is. I add, especially for this, for what you say, I added this for the ancestors so you don't get too much. So basically, uh, I only get the ancestors who, whose the length of the path matches the length of the, of the path that I am matching with the like. But if you have one slash two slash three and, and another one is one slash two slash thirty, it's the same length? No, but the length I calculate. Uh, since I don't, since exactly what you say, the primary keys, they are not going to have the same length. Uh, what I do is I calculate the length with the, the times the separator is included in the path. Yeah, but they have the same length with, with, with the separators. There are three. With one slash two slash three and one slash two slash thirty. Yeah. It's the same length. Yeah, but if the, I mean, if the query, I don't know if you understand the, query, the question correctly. Okay, sure. Basically, <laughs> no, the like, what I do is, uh, if you remove this uh, equals length, you are going to match more than you are expected to. But yeah, you, you just test it and I, I mean, I have the test for this. This is for you. Uh, the less uh, statements, the better. So adjacency list, avoid it as much as possible if you are querying ancestors. Uh, also, as joints are, uh, if you have like a lot of joints, it's going to be like bad for performance. Um, closure tables and nested sets should work fine with performance uh, and, and path enumeration as well. Uh, I think the biggest problem of path enumeration is the, the lack of reference and integrity. So you have to, to maintain the paths manually, basically. Any other question? We also have a tree and, and we use the adjacency. Yeah. Yeah, cascading is going to help, especially for the deletion, for example, that we commented, that will help. Um, the has many normally doesn't involve like has many of the same component, of the same domain class. But if you are in an adjacency list, uh, things you can do is, uh, if you are okay with it, use like the delete cascade. That's going to help you to solve all the mess of the deletion. In the static mapping part, I think you can configure it there. Yeah. And if you are using a modern database, uh, try the with query. Uh, isolate it in a service, uh, so you know that you are coupled to that particular uh, database implementation. But uh, that will help. That will help your performance a lot. So uh, this kind of support is going to come for more databases. So. Probably, in, in my, I have it here like it's not in my SQL. I am unsure about that, to be honest. Um, so that would be the way to go, probably. Same data, 
You can have the same node uh, belonging to several parents at the same time. Yeah, uh, but, it, but that's a feature. I don't think that's a bug. That's a good thing because it allows you to, to have like more complex trees, which may come handy if it depends on your use case. Maybe for, for the tickets sample, maybe not. But uh, I mean, for the tickets sample as well. Imagine if you have like a tree which, where you have like uh, sports, and then you have like soccer, and then you have football, and then you could put like the notes, like the Spanish Liga, you could put it below both parents. And depending of the, of the, if an American user will probably go to soccer and I will go to football. I'll give you a teaser later, okay? No, no, I haven't. Uh, I know uh, James uh, is working in, in GraphQL support for, for GORM, for GORM 7. That's something we are exploring. I personally have no experience with it. Nothing more? Thank you, guys.